Welcome back, Shalligators. Happy almost New Year. Oh my gosh, it's New Year's Eve. And what are we all thinking about? Drinking? Well, yes, that also. Um, what, what's the next big thing we're thinking about? Who we're kissing tonight? Okay, yes. These two things for sure. But then after that, the hangover we're having tomorrow? All right, that's number three. Number four, surely, is our New Year's resolutions, right? Now, <sighs> On one hand, people are like, New Year's resolution, it's so cliche. Like, there is that contingency of people out there who are very, like, Ugh, like anti-resolutions. They don't work. Maybe yours don't work. Mine have historically worked. But if you say that, you're essentially saying that setting goals is stupid. I don't want to be around those people because those people are stupid. And maybe they're not just stupid, but they just don't know how to make resolutions actually stick. And studies show that I think... It's something like resolutions are abandoned within the first 11 days of the new year. 11 days. That's all the fight sometimes we have in us. Why? Not because we're lazy, not because we are stupid, not because what we're dreaming is even impossible, but maybe because we're not approaching them in the right kind of ways. So in this video today, we are going to talk about how to make resolutions that stick based not on like, ooh, hopes and dreams based on actionable scientific studies. And we're gonna get a little woo-woo with some manifestation stuff. I'm gonna tell you all of it. <clears throat> and we are going to kick off our new challenge. It's a challenge challenge. I love doing challenges. We haven't done one in a while. I actually don't even remember what our last one is. But if not now, when? And if not us, then who? So we're gonna kick off a challenge and I'm gonna tell you guys about some other exciting stuff coming up before we get started. Oh, I can actually tell you one now. Okay, so tomorrow, January 1st, 5 p.m. Pacific, 8 p.m. Eastern Time, I'm doing an Instagram Live on my Instagram, ShallonXO, follow me, with my mindset coach, Laura St. John. You guys have probably heard me talk about her before. She's amazing. Maybe you joined some of her courses or just followed her on Instagram and TikTok for some free tips. She's fantastic. But she's going to be joining me, and we're going to talk more about how to make resolutions that stick from her place that she comes from, like a mindset manifestation place. You know, I like to talk about science and like what research says about stuff, and she comes from a place that's... I don't want to say woo-woo because it's literally not. Like, it's not. She's not like, get your eye of newt. Like, everything she tells you is so easy. It's so actionable. It's basically just making your thoughts work for you. Because you're thinking all the time. And I use the example of, like, a GPS system. Like, if you're driving, where are you going? Are you driving in circles? Do you have a destination? Do you know how to get there? And the tips I give and the tips she gives, it's going to give you kind of a, it's going to give you a map to get where you want to go. So it's going to be fun. Come hung over. It's fine. <laughs> to my Instagram, ShallonXO. And also stop by my Instagram because I've been giving you guys some sort of fill in the blank end of year journal reflecting prompts. Like if I could sum up 2022 in one word, it would be. I have left behind in 2022 the idea that I am blank and I am now embracing the knowledge that I am blank. And it's just really good. I really love what you guys are putting in the comment section. You're so incredibly insightful. And like how I was filling in those blanks, I read what you guys are doing. I'm like, oh damn. Oh, that's so much deeper. Oh, that's so much better. That's so much deeper. This is incredible. This is amazing. So definitely stop over there and see that. And if you really want to start the year off right, join our text community, The Shalantourage. You get daily texts and blog posts and articles from me. You get exclusive story times. You're going to binge all of Evil Week from this year that's on there for free for you to watch. Plus my sexy session, Alpha Academy hookup tutorials. Mm. Valentine's Day is coming. Nay. Valentine's Day is coming. Plus, you get access to Telegram chats with girls from all over the world and so many girls like meeting in real life and becoming best friends. So if you want to reset this year, I know a lot of girls who have joined the Chalantourage because they want to make different friends and branch out of who their hometown thinks they are. Or maybe they move to a different city and they don't have an established group of friends yet, but you still want some connectivity and sisterhood. It's a great place to get it. And I'm on there and you guys can chat with me. I love it. Plus, did I mention story times? Mm. I, I take you all the way into my actual life. It's a lot. Okay, let's talk about resolutions. So I've said in the past, I think, I don't know where I've mentioned it, but every year, in addition to my actual resolutions, I set a word of the year. And last year, my word was ruthless. I know, not just because I sell it on a necklace, <laughs> but because I felt like the time, like 
I had shifted so many things in my life. I had moved to Montana. I had embraced this career. You know, I had broken up with my ex who I'd been with for so long. And I just, I was becoming addicted in a good way to that feeling of, of, of slashing and burning. And I just, sometimes I feel like the word picks us and we might not even know why we're drawn to a word at the time. And then we look back and we're like, that is exactly the word that I needed. And I'm so glad I embraced it because life gave me all the opportunities to demonstrate that. So for me, the way I manifested ruthlessness, it's not just with other people. I mean, that's like mm, the fun bitch ass evil week way to think of it. I'm going to slash and burn. I definitely did that. But one thing I think if you've ever had to cut somebody out of your life, it is so much more about your strength and your boundaries than them. You know what I mean? Cutting someone out is hard on us. Yeah, it's probably hard on that person. Maybe, maybe not. Maybe they don't give a shit, which is why you're cutting them out. But it it takes so much strength from us to do that, that it is really such an achievement, I think, to cut people off, to say, no, this hasn't met my standard. No, you've breached X boundary one too many times. I'm, I'm moving on. Like, is that not the hardest thing in the world? And so I was really, really proud of myself because yes, I was ruthless with others, but I was ruthless with myself. I was no longer allowing so many bad behaviors. Drinking, I mean, I'll have a tipple now and then, but like I am in control. You know, I don't feel like if there's a party and everyone's drinking, oh, I have to have it even if I don't want it. I can say no, like it doesn't bother me anymore. I can truly, truly have fun at any event in any scenario sober. There's no difference. In fact, I think I'm more fun sober. I don't, anyway. So I conquered that. I cut out dairy. I got really serious about my health this year, not just losing weight, but I spent a ton of money on a naturopath and really like I'm on all these supplements. So that was a ruthlessness within me to look at the reality of friendships, my health, my eating habits. Next year, we're going to look at spending habits because that's, you know, that's a bit of a peccadillo for me. But I'm so thankful that I did that. And I want to continue that energy into 2023. But my, my word for this year is organize. Now look, I believe, and I think I did say this in a previous video. Sometimes I make so much content, I don't know what I've said where. I'm sorry. That we can have a, a word or resolutions for a quarter. It doesn't have to be the entire year. Because maybe I'll get organized and by March I'll be like, all right. And I'm ready for the next challenge. So if, if it seems like too much to forecast 12 months in advance, I get it. Especially after the pandemic, like, fuck man, it popped up in my memories on my phone, like 2020 New Year's Eve, when we were all like, this is going to be our year. Like, you know, we just don't know what's ahead. Not that we should be living in a place of fear, but it's understandable that we cannot count on the future unfolding exactly precisely the way we expect it to. And of course we know that about our own lives, but we never thought that we would have that trepidation about things like, can I go grocery shopping six months from now? Will I be able to get on a plane? What if I can't see my grandparents for two years? You know? So I get it. So set a word for the month, if you can, for the week, set a new word every week. But hold on. Let's move away from words, but I do want you to tell me your word in the comment section because I love hearing them. I love, love, love this. And it just, I put it on the wall, print it out. Like just, <laughs> you know, I, I wore my word around my neck, ruthless, you know? The word organize on a necklace would perhaps not be quite as chic. I'll think it over. But let me know. I mean, if there's some other badass ones, like let's fucking make some jewelry. But let's talk about actual goals because at the end of this, we are rolling out the new challenge. Okay. So I've done a lot of research on what makes resolutions stick. Because like I said, most people abandon them within 11 days. And it's not because what they're looking at is, you know, impossible. It's because they're, not, they're setting themselves up for failure. And I think we do this a lot. Like, God knows I did this for years, years about, and I know I'm still doing it. I know I'm still doing it. And that's okay. It's just a matter of pulling back and recognizing, okay, am I setting myself up for success or am I kind of tying my own shoes here, right? Am I creating an environment, a plan where I believe because of logistics, because I have done all this like preparation organizational work that I can achieve these goals? What am I saying? I am saying SMART, S-M-A-R-T, 
SMART. This is an acronym that a lot of Fortune 500 companies use, a lot of CEOs use, in a way to create lasting change, AKA making your resolutions work. Okay, what does SMART stand for? Okay, I'm gonna read it because I wanna get it right. Specific. Okay, what is the deal with SMART? You want your goals to be SMART goals. That is, you want your goals to be specific, measurable, achievable, relevant, time-related. We're gonna go over these. Specific, measurable, achievable, relevant, time-related. Okay, what does this mean? Let's break them down. First of all, first and foremost, specific. This is the problem number one when people make resolutions. Get healthy, be successful, save money, find love. It's like, yeah, no shit. We all want to do that. Those are very worthy achievements, but they're not specific. Get healthy. What does that mean? Are you like talking about your cardiovascular health? Do you want to be able to do a Tough Mudder? Do you want to lose 10 pounds? Do you want to eat more salads, eat less meat? Like, what does that mean? Get granular, get granular, okay? Because the next thing you want something to be is measurable. What is success? Get healthy. Well, okay, I mean, I'm, I'm healthy now. I'm like ambulatory. I can walk, I'm not on oxygen. I've done it. No, if you have something specific, you can clearly then measure success. I want to eat less meat. Okay, let's get measurable. What does that mean? Three days a week, I don't eat meat. Okay, now we're getting specific. We're getting somewhere. Now we can quantify whether or not we're succeeding or we're failing, okay? Because what happens when our goal is too vague? Get healthy. It's easy to give up because we're like, huh, we're looking at a mountain. What does that mean, get healthy? Like my hair, my cuticles? Someone said my cuticles can give away my age. What the fuck? But if we can say, no, one thing I mean by getting healthy is eating meat only four times a week right? Or getting my 10,000 steps in every single day. Okay? Because then we're more likely to stick with it if we think it's achievable. And isn't that the next one? Achievable. Now look, my New Year's resolutions used to be like, lay on the cover of Vogue as a model. Girl, bitch. I mean, I guess anything is possible, but are you looking at your goals and are you making goals that have a shot in hell? Now look, this is where mindset comes in because I want you to dream big. And this is something Laura's going to talk about more in the live. And if you were on her vision board workshop today, she talked about this a lot that like we want to dream big and, but I'm going to add on there. We want to plan small, dream big, plan small. Okay. I am a go getter. I'm a goal getter because I am a breaker downer. I'm a list maker. I'm a post-it noter. I'm a to do person. Everything big is comprised of tiny little things that are small. Build a house, okay? You can see that. It's like, I'm just, I'm just here building. It's like, no, you got to go to Home Depot. You got to get lumber. You got to get like nails. I don't even know. I don't know why I use that example. I have no idea what it takes to build a house. There could be like newspaper inside these walls. I have no clue. There could be cake. It could be made of genoise sponge. I, I have no idea. My point is, I want you to dream big, plan small. But right, we want things to be achievable. It's like, well, Shallon, I wanna put my dream house on my vision board, that doesn't seem achievable. Okay, then what does? Hold on, let's actually back it up. Instead of looking at the thing, the house, the man, the yacht, the job title, I want you instead to look at the feelings that those things give you, right? So I made a vision board uh, when I was, doing this seminar with Laura, and I'll show it to you. It's dorky. It's very vulnerable to show somebody a vision board. It is, because it's like, here's what I deep down want. And it's like, it's cringy, right? But listen, we, this is a safe space. We are not, we're, no one is judging anyone else's goals, right? Okay, so I'm just gonna show you part of this. So oh, this is, it is so cringy. Okay, so the way I make my vision boards, and so, people do them in different ways. Um, I put things on here that I simply enjoy looking at. Like it's not necessarily, I'm not trying to manifest paint. I can actually go purchase paint whenever I want, but I'm trying to manifest other things like being on a yacht with champagne and chocolates. But 
If I am coming from a place of anxiety or a place of lack, or I don't feel good about myself that day, or the world seems overwhelming, to look at this, I'll be like, that'll never happen, it'll never happen. So what I do is I put pictures on here that just give me a happy feeling, because then I take, I, I like, I suck up that happy feeling from, because I just like pastels. I just, I'm, I'm like a crow. I just like colors. I take this happy feeling and I, I squish it onto here so that I, I suck up this. And while I'm looking at these happy feelings and colors, I just really like colors and rainbows. I mush them onto this fantasy, this goal, this soon to be reality. And I think, okay, yes. Now I'm applying these good feelings onto this right here. And so that helps the manifestation. That's how, how things can come true. Okay, so I don't want to get, ooh, ugh, huh, my vision board, when vision boards attack. Okay, so I have a wedding picture on here, not because I want to get married again. I mean, I would love some cake, to be honest. And I look stunning in white with the right spray tan. Anyway, but I want the feelings associated with this. And to me, I consider this fairly high level manifestation because I'm not like, I need to have like this, this wedding, I mean, I want like, look at look at their little pose. Like, I want the passion that comes from there. And to underscore that, I cut out some words. Protect, I want a man who feels protective of me, you know, and can like kill a bear or another human. I live in Montana. Love, duh. Kindness, okay? And then says, it's your heart that takes you places. It's hard when you cut things out of magazines because you get like ads for eczema cream or recipes or just weird not a lot of their phrases make sense. So you really have to dig deep. But this is my point, is it? it's not necessarily about the thing, the yacht, the house, the husband, the dorky pose. It's about the feelings associated with that. Why do I bring this up? Because if we are setting goals and you know there's something we want and we feel like it's out of reach, okay, okay. I'm a big believer, and Laura in, in our Instagram, she's a, she wants you to dream huge and dream big, and I do too. But again, I want you to plan small. And the way I've achieved things via manifestation over the years is I start real big. Okay, I want, I want a new TV show. Oh, and I'm, I can feel that, that fear kick in, like, no, how? Blah, blah, blah. So I say to myself, okay, I'm not abandoning the idea of the TV show. That's the dream. But what can, how far can I scale it down? Hopefully it's just one rung that I can believe in that. Can I imagine myself with a Netflix comedy special? No. Can I imagine myself doing a Zoom guest spot on a CNN commentary or a Daily Mail commentary or something funny like that? I guess CNN's not funny. Yes, I can imagine myself doing that. Okay. So maybe you're going to have to dial it down a few more rungs. Can I picture myself with a six pack by August? No. Okay. Can I picture myself buying jeans that are one size smaller? Yeah, I can picture that. Okay. Now we're getting started. Now I want you to latch on to that and I want you to focus on that. You're still keeping that big dream. You're still keeping that six pack. You're still keeping that Netflix special, but you're focusing on something that your mind can get around because listen, we, our gift and our curse as alpha females is that our mind is engaged all the time. I mean, we are turning and burning and we are coming up with ideas and we're solving problems. And when it comes to manifestation, our mind that is used to solving problems, that is used to doing all that logistical stuff, it runs into this wall. How am I going to achieve that? How, how, how? Okay. So for me, this is a workaround that I have, that I have given my overly analytical brain. Dial it down to something you can feel faith in and then let's, let's go for that. And that's not, again, it's not to say that I don't want you to dream big. I want you to dream of things that are actionable so that you get the confidence to keep on dreaming, right? I don't want you to set the bar too high. And again, there's no such thing as too high because the universe works in truly incredible, mysterious ways. Like everything I've ever achieved is impossible. Like it would never, a YouTuber, I had a book deal nine months after I moved to New York. I knew nobody in that town. Like none of it has been possible, but I've always done it. So when you make these boards, when you make your goals, sorry, kids are scraping my, what are they? They scrape with the shovel in the driveway, shoveling snow. I can do this. I, I'm an adult. We're doing specific, measurable, achievable. Okay. And we just solved achievability because, oh, I don't know if I could achieve it. Then you're going to bring it down to where you think you can achieve. Okay. If you can't stay in that big dream, that's all right. I get it. And 
I want you to focus on the feelings associated with that outcome. How do I feel on a yacht? Well, I feel relaxed. I feel free. I feel luxurious. Okay, how could you import those feelings into your life today without the yacht? How could you feel relaxed? Well, I could get a bath bomb from Target and I could put my phone on Do Not Disturb and I could take a bath. Okay, I could feel free. I could cancel on that work happy hour I don't really want to go on. Okay, now we're tapping into the free feeling. I feel luxurious. Maybe I'm going to buy myself two of those really nice chocolates from that really fancy chocolate place in the mall and I'm going to sit outside and I'm going to sit with my sunglasses on and I'm going to unplug and I'm just going to focus on the feeling of eating those chocolates. I'm really going to savor every moment. No yacht needed. And what that's going to do is tap into those feelings. So now when you pin that picture of the yacht on your, on your board or on your Pinterest board or whatever, you are already aligned with the feelings of yachtiness. You are yachting as we speak. You are tapped into that, right? Because you're doing it small. You're dreaming big, but you're planning small. You're getting the bath bomb. You're getting the little chocolates. You're putting the phone and do not disturb. Small, easy. You can do that. And the more you do that by connecting into what these feelings actually are behind the goals, behind the pins, the more you can tap into that, the universe is like, yo, that girl, she is aligned with these feelings. She's already used to this. So bringing a yacht her way, it's no big deal. She's already yachted up. She's already on the yachty path. That's how I've done things. Like, I think I'm a manifester and I think I achieve a lot of my goals because I craft a life that I alone enjoy. Now look, there's downsides and there's sacrifices to that. I don't have a husband. I don't have kids. A girl just came over to set up my photo booth tonight because I'm throwing a big New Year's Eve party. And she sees my giant Justin Bieber on the wall. She sees like my nap room. She sees my theater upstairs. And she's like, you know, if I wasn't married, this is how my house would look. I'm like, thank you. Like, yes, I craft a life. No, I don't have kids. No, I don't have a husband. Do I want those things? Nah. But let's say that you do. Craft a life that you love without that because then you're tapping in to those feelings of luxuriousness, of making yourself happy. The vibration is lining up. And you just might find that you have a great guy in your life. You might find that this family starts to create itself. But let's keep on with our SMART, okay? So we had specific, measurable, achievable, R, relevant. This one is really good. I kind of glossed over this one because like I said, I am a chick who lives alone and I'm the master and commander of my entire universe. Relevant means this has to matter to you, to you. Are your dreams someone else's dreams? Are they? Are they your parents' dreams? Are they your husband's dreams? Are they your boyfriend's goals? Like he really wants to move to North Carolina. Do you want to move to North Carolina? And listen, I just said, being the person who is like, I am completely autonomous. I do whatever I want all the time. Yes, th that, is, that is the gift and the curse of being like free and single and unencumbered. But the season I'm in in my life, I like that. I'm moving into the season where I'm ready to let love in my life. But for the past few years, I've been in a very selfish solo mission season and I fucking loved it. Like beautifying my life. My, my travel, my trips. I went to Paris by myself last year because like I don't need to wait around for someone else to be able to go. Even if you're not going to Paris, drive to two towns over and go to a different Applebee's for God's sakes. Like travel within your own life as much as you can with, be, and enjoy this season of not having to ask anyone else permission. But what if you're not in that season? Go back to the relevant. Is this goal you're setting relevant to you? Does it matter to you? Because if it doesn't, it's not going to happen because your unconscious is going to be like, I don't even want this. I don't want to be an electrical engineer. I don't want to do CrossFit. I like Pilates. So make sure it resonates for you and for no one else. Because yeah, we want to please our parents. Of course, my God, I'm an only child. I'm like still umbilically connected to my mother. We want to please our boyfriend. We want to please our friends. But none of these people are going to be sitting inside the consequences of our decisions 24 seven, except for us only us. So we got to make sure it matters. So what is the last letter? T. Time relevant. What does this mean? It means there's a time frame. It means there's, it's not 
get healthy. It's lose 10 pounds by February 1st, okay? It's cut back on alcohol four days a week. It's go to Pilates three times a week. It is, there is a time frame. This ties into specificity and measurability, okay? Because when you have a time frame, you can check in on your progress. Okay, you wanna lose 10 pounds by February 1st. January 10th, are you gonna be weighing yourself? January 20th, you're gonna be weighing yourself. 10 pounds in a month is a lot. That, I just, I don't know where I pulled that out of. I still think it's like December 1st, so not 10 pounds in a month probably, that's okay, you know? <laughs> Whatever it might be, two pounds. But if you have a time frame on it, you're much more likely to stay accountable. And again, this is a system, the smart system. CEOs, big brands, large companies, small companies, successful people in general go back to this system. So if you're ever confused, I want you to look at your resolutions and be like, are these resolutions smart, specific, measurable, I can't spell smart, achievable, relevant to you, and time framey. Time, what do they call it? Time related. Is there a time frame? And if not, how can you tweak it to make it so? Even if that means you're dialing it down a little bit. Okay, maybe you're not going to get your master's degree this year. Maybe you're going to enroll and get 10 credits under your belt. Okay? If that feels more achievable and if that is something that your, your little analytical brain can lock onto, great. But again, tomorrow when we talk to Laura St. John, she's going to tell you how to remove that analytical roadblock. And listen, this is something I struggle with. I do a lot of private sessions with her and like, I'm just, I'm just such like a, like a machine in my mind. So it's very hard for me to kind of remove those analytical roadblocks. By the way, I know I look weird today. I can't find my camera that I usually shoot on. Who the hell loses a camera inside their own home? I do. And so I know I look weird. I'm glad we're all on the same page. I don't like how I look. So that's the smart system. The next way to craft resolutions that exist is something called action triggers. Now two German scientists, or excuse me, psychiatr psychiatrists, one's a psychiatrist, one's a psychologist, you don't care, in Germany came up with this system because human beings were very cause and effect oriented. We're an if then type species. For example, I order a burger and I get fries, right? A burger and fries. So how do we apply this to resolutions? Okay. I want you to take a current behavior, a fairly benign behavior, right? And instead of the second part, the burger and the fries, right? I want you to take out that second part and I want you to replace it with a good habit. It's burger and salad. It's burger and salad. It's burger and, it, and it's salad, okay? You're not trying to take away the burger. You're not trying to take away your ability to go to a restaurant. You're just replacing one part of this. So that also taps into our analytical brain that's like, but but I have a system here. My system is in place, my burger and then the fries. It's a system that I made. That's okay. You can keep your system. The brain needs a system. The brain doesn't need the burger and the fries. It doesn't care. It just needs an if then system to operate on. So give your brain this. When I was trying to stop drinking. And it, it wasn't very hard because of the medicine I'm on. But I realized I would come home from a hard day. I would go, I would drop my bag. I got very granular. I would drop my bag in the same place. I would kick my shoes off. I would go to the fridge. I would open wine. I would take a big crystal goblet and I would pour the wine in. <sighs> and then I would sit down. It was becoming a routine. It wasn't like a set in stone routine, but it was becoming more of a routine than I wanted it to be. And I thought, okay, how can I change this? All right. Now a crazy person would be like, we have to take away the whole system. You're not going to come in through the door. You're going to come down the chimney like Santa Claus. No. An also crazy person would say, fine, you can come in the door, but you're going to have to keep your purse on. And then you're going to keep your shoes on. No, you can take your shoes off. You have to wear them on your hands now. No, you can keep all of those because those are benign behaviors. You walk in the door, you drop your bag. It's got to go somewhere. You take your shoes off. Great. You open the fridge. That's fine too. But now, instead of reaching for the wine, oh, I'm reaching for a soda water. And now, instead of the ritual of popping the cork, I'm popping a top. And instead of hearing that when the cork comes out, I hear Psh! that's a sound. And I can still reach for the goblet and I can still pour something and I can still sit down and be like, ah. And only one part of that system, a tiny part, has changed. The wine and now it's soda water. That's it. My brain still gets the system. My brain still gets the reward of, ah, I'm settling down. I've dropped my purse. My shoes are off. I'm on the couch. I have my big fancy crystal goblet. I have still had a ritual. 
Humans are ritualistic creatures. You don't believe me? Here's one word, Catholicism. It's pretty popular. We like a ritual. We like a funeral. We like a wedding. We thrive on systems. So give your brain a system. And maybe you, maybe you need to make some new systems, but I have a feeling you could take something, oops, excuse me, you're already doing, like for example, watching these videos. A lot of you guys say, Shallon, you came to the gym with me today. I watched you on the treadmill. <laughs> so maybe that's it. It's like, I, will, I can allow myself to listen to Shallon's videos, but I'm going to do it while I get my 10,000 steps in. I'm going to put the phone in my pocket. I don't need to see her. She looks weird. She can't find her camera. That's okay. Or I'm going to do it on the treadmill. Or I'm going to watch my trash TV, but I'm going to do it while I'm on the elliptical or something. How can you create an action trigger, right? Which the scientists define as there's an action that triggers another action. I walk through the door. I drop my bag. I take off my shoes. What is the action I'm triggering? It used to be wine. Now I've switched it. Okay. So think of how you can create systems to make these things work. One thing I have on my New Year's resolution list, I know, I know what you're going to say. You've been talking about this for years. I understand that. Doing the splits. I want to do the splits so bad. It's been on my list for like 10 years. So I'm going to try action triggers, okay? Whenever I'm watching TV and a commercial comes on, action trigger. I'm suddenly down on the floor, I'm doing the splits or I'm stretching. Maybe it's not about the splits. Maybe I'm just stretching. Okay, maybe the action trigger is when I'm waiting for the hot water to warm up in my shower, I start to do stretches and I hang my head and I, you know, I do my roll downs for 15 seconds. This is going to take a little bit of practice. And now my friends, we're getting into our challenge. Are you ready for our challenge? I'm calling it the four by four. So this challenge is also relying on science. So they say it takes 21 days to create a habit, okay? I think we can do this in 16. I think we can do this in 16. I want you to pick something you're going to do four times a week, four times a week. Now look, you might be thinking, I'm going to tell you, it's got to be CrossFit. It's got to be, I don't know. I could, truly can't think of anything worse than CrossFit. One thing, four times a week. Let's start small. Maybe it's, I'm turning off the water while I brush my teeth. Water is a very scarce resource. Like our next world war is going to be about water. Okay. Turn your fucking water off while you brush your teeth. You don't need it on four times a week. I'm going to do that. I can do that. I can do that four times a week. I'm going to set up my clothes for the next day. Four times a week. I'm going to make my bed four times a week. I'm going to bring my lunch from home four times a week. I'm going to get all 10,000 steps in four times a week. I'm going to hang out and play with my little sister. Four times a week, I'm going to work on my Etsy store. Do you see how these scale up? There's a reason. It's called habit stacking. I want you to start with something small. If you're just really in the place, you're like, I don't know where to begin. I can't trust myself. Every life is spiders. I'm just crawling out of depression, whatever. Okay, turn your water off or you brush your teeth. Four times a week. Make that bed. Four times a week. And I want you to do this thing, this, this four thing for four weeks. This is our four by four. So what can you promise yourself that you're going to do four times a week for four weeks? That's 16 times. And like I said, I have a feeling we can create a habit faster than the average bear because we're smarter than most people. Like we're literally just a lot smarter. So, okay. My pledge to you, my Forex pledge, four workouts a week. I just hired a personal trainer. I still go to Pilates. I'm seeing the trainer two or three times a week. I have to add in two more. I have to do that. Tell me what your 4X is. And it's, again, it's okay to start small because I want you to habit stack. Maybe after the first week or two weeks, you're like, yeah, I got this. Now I just reflexively turn like the water off when I brush my teeth every day. It's really not that hard. All right. Now you know what you've proven to yourself. Not that you can turn the water off. Not that you were the backbone of the society, which you are. It's that you're the girl that can do things. You are the girl that can put her mind to something and she can do it. So, all right, you're going to bump it up. Maybe four times a week, I'm going to make my bed. It's no sweat. I actually like it. I think I can make it five or six times a week. Now we're going to bump it up. Are you the girl that can take her vitamins four or five times a week? What, bitch? Can you call your grandmother four times a week? Oh, here we go. Habit stacking is really confidence stacking, right? Because a lot of the habits, like make your bed or don't, like life goes on. But I do that. Like a few years ago, I decided I'm going to make my bed 
every single day, no matter what. And it is, a, it's just how I start my day. I set, like not reset because I just woke up, but it's, I set myself. And for the rest of the day, I walk in my room and I'm like, hmm. And it gives me just that little hmm of confidence when I'm like, Ugh, I can't do this thing. I can't have this conversation. I can't open this email. I'm like, well, I did that. I'm the girl that makes her bed, God damn it. Okay, when people talk about me, if I died tomorrow, what are we putting on my tombstone? Dangerously thin, of course, and the girl who made her bed. That's who I am. So you know what? You bring on whatever, because if I can make a bed, I can do anything. Does that sound a little ridiculous? Yeah, who cares? Let's be ridiculous. Because you know what else is being ridiculous? All of our fears. Our fears are cosplayers and ridiculosity. Okay? And they're down there screaming from under the bed. Here's the worst case scenario. Everyone's going to laugh at you. If you open that email, somehow your computer is going to explode. I hate you. And you know what we're doing? We're like, wait, really? Explode? I believe you. We're believing that fear ass fucking brain. So let's, if we're operating under the plane of ridiculousness, if we're just in crazy town, all right. Let's be crazy for our benefit. You wanna be crazy? Let's be crazy. I can make my bed, I can colonize life on Jupiter. I see no fucking difference because both of them require discipline. Both of them require you doing something without all this external reward. I got this. Oh, Jupiter, like it's far? Whatever. Let's be ridiculous in service of our dreams. Because you know, this goes back to manifesting. You are thinking thoughts. You are emotionally driving. Where are you going? Are you giving energy to the right things? Or are you just bleh, Are you just spewing out energy? I have noticed an unmistakable correlation between the way I think, the way I eat, and the way I spend money. Especially eating and money. Like, and I feel like I've tackled my eating thing this year and I wanna tackle how I spend money you know, this year, I, I have, there's an unmistakable parallel. I'm not quite like there yet. I'm like digging into it, but I don't think I'm there enough to tell you guys about and like to hone in on the lessons. I'm still, I'm still in it, right? I'm still in the middle of this process. So give me a few months. It's something I really want to untangle because I don't think we talk, we don't talk about money here really at all. And I think people in general don't talk enough about money because it is so tied to self-worth, right? And the same with how we eat. You know, you have the body positivity movement, which to me is like the spending movement. Like just go and spend. Who fucking cares? You would never give that advice to someone. You're like, no, no, no. There's a definite consequence. To tell someone to eat whatever they want, it's fine. Not, not wise either, you know? It truly is moderation. But listen, I'm getting off topic. Where is I even going with this? I don't know. I have no idea. How we think, how we spend, how we eat. Okay, I guess I could, <laughs> so sorry. I'm really tired and I have a cold and I have this party tonight and I'm just like, okay, fancy dress. All right. Um, we can wrap it up by saying that if we can show ourselves, we can do the hard things, we can resist the urge to leave the water on, to leave the bed unmade, little things. If we can conquer that, why can't we step it up a little? Why can't we step it up a little more? Why can't we prove to ourselves incrementally, step by step, that we got this? And then when those big challenges come, when the weight loss, when the financial reining it in, when that comes, we are already the girl who's used to doing things. Do we love skipping the appetizers? Do we love skipping the girls weekend? No. But we are the people who are used to making those decisions. The negotiation is no sweat for us. We got this. So I want you to start small. I want you to dream big, plan small. I want you to dream smart, specific, measurable, achievable, relevant to you, time frame. okay? I want you to create action triggers, an if-then system. If it is 9.30 and I get up and I'm wandering around and it's nibbling hour and I open the door to the pantry and I reach in for something, I'm going to now reach in for a bottle of water that I keep in there instead of a bag of wheat thins. 
I can still get up. I can wander around. I can still open the closet. I can still reach in for something. I can still feel a feeling of opening something and plopping back down the couch. But now it's a kombucha. Now it's not a soda. My systems are still in place, but I have replaced the one thing about that system that wasn't working for me. And I replace it now that this is a great system. I didn't have to throw out the system. I just needed to clean it up a little bit. That's no sweat. I don't have to burn the house down. I just need to clean it up. No big deal. We got this. Tell me your resolutions. Um, What do you guys think about sharing resolutions? Actually, one last tip, because I do want to talk about whether or not we should tell people our goals. Because there's, there's two different schools of thought on this. Some people say, yes, you know, it keeps you accountable. It takes a village, blah, blah, blah. And some people are like, no, hustlers move in silence, you know? And what I have kind of determined is I want you to work backwards. Like before you go and you're like, this is what I'm doing. I want you to think about the ideal response you get from other people, okay? Because psychologically, I've read some articles by some doctors saying that it's actually not advisable all the time to share your goals because then you get that front-loaded applause, right? If you're like, I'm running a marathon, people are like, yay! And you're like, I know, yay! And everyone's like, yeah, yay! And then you feel that feeling as if you've done it, which makes you not incentivized to actually do it because you just got the reward. You just got the applause. You got the yay. And you're like, yay. Oh, what time is the alarm going off? How? It's how many miles? Good God. I don't even like to drive that far. You're actually less incentivized to do it because you, you got the box checked. So, okay. I want you, when you think about your goals, what are you picturing in this like wonderful magical moment? You're sharing them. What are people doing? If it's the yay, I don't tell people because I don't want you to get that upfront. Congratulations. Nope. I want you to work for it. I want you to get it at the end. But if you're telling people because you want them to be like, okay, we're going to keep you accountable. Okay. You said no spending after 6 p.m. Okay. You said no eating after two. Okay. If you want a village, hey, you know what? I've really been wanting to join that rock climbing gym too. Let's do it then I want you to tell people. But it you got to be really honest with yourself. There's no shame in wanting that applause. We all want that applause. Like, isn't that what we change? Look at the fucking Olympics, right? But if, if that's what you want, I just want you to work for I just want you to work for it. And I know it sucks, right? But instead, instead of being like, oh, I'm running a marathon, be like, hey, I've really been wanting to run more. You know, maybe one day I could start training for a marathon. They don't need to know that that's your primary goal. That's for you. That's for you. I'm not saying you dial that down. You say, you pretend to yourself that's not a goal, but that that is something, that is a blessing for you, okay? So you're going to keep that and nurture that like a gift. And instead you're going to say, I really want to run more. Does anybody want to like do a running club with me four times a week for four weeks? Shout. And then, because with that, you're not going to get a yay. They're not going to be like, woo, fuck yeah, girl, running club. You're going to get, um, that's actually not for me. Or, you know what, I've been wanting to start that too. Great. Now you've taken the same goal, because you have the same goal, it's the marathon. But now you've broken it down into small plans. You're still dreaming big, but you're dreaming big privately. And you're breaking it down into small plans. They're actionable. Smart. You got this. You got this. So, Tell me what you guys think. I do think that this is a good place to share dreams because since we don't all know each other, you know, you're less likely to get that woo, woo, like you would from your friends or your family, you know? So we're just kind of like a tougher crowd, but in a good way that we're all going to keep each other accountable. Tell me what your far, your four by four challenge is going to be. Mine, workouts. Four workouts a week for four weeks. Let's get it going. We got this. Because if not now, when? And if not us? Who? Like I said, join me tomorrow, December, nope, January 1st at 5 p.m. Pacific, 8 p.m. Eastern for an Instagram live stream with Laura St. John. She's going to add some really amazing tips from her point of view. Love her. And yeah, join me at Shallon XO. And like I said, head over there to fill out some of the little journal prompts just to get some clarity on the last year and a little bit of clarity about where we want to go in the new year. We got this. I'll see you later, Shalligators. Happy New Year. Bye.